My name is Jonathan McCrosty. Yeah, growing up in Africa as a son of missionary parents in West Africa, I'm very thankful for Christian parents committed to the Lord. I went to a boarding school for missionary children. And when I was 16, I felt already that this is what God wanted me to do. So that's why after high school, I went to Bible school, college to train, where I first met OM. And then, of course, I ended up coming to Operation Mobilization rather than another mission society, because I felt God had pushed me into it. I joined OM in Europe, May of 62. That's when I arrived and uh, joined George's team in London as we were preparing for the first Operation Mobilization. And I was involved. What really amazed me at, as we went and spoke in churches is people being interested in wanting to actually get involved in a campaign to distribute literature across Europe. And it was really thrilling to see about 300 participate that first summer. Uh, and then, of course, I got involved helping organize the conferences. I have to confess that uh, I never was involved for any length of time in an evangelistic team. I was organizing conferences, organizing teams, administration. That seemed to be my gift to try and keep things going. Yes, I wasn't sure if, if Jonathan had any interest. Since he was the team leader, leader, he was very careful in showing any emotion. And, um, yeah, that was the main thing, to be careful on expressing any emotion. So I didn't really know. So when he talked about it, I was a bit shaking. First, he had that whole list. There was quite a few points on that list. Simple lifestyle, never having maybe a regular home. He would often be gone. Could I agree to that? That was, were the main things. That was in April 67. And then October, that same year, we got engaged in Honor Oak. And then the following year, in April, we married, 68. We bo were both 30. I'm a little bit older than Johnson. Yeah, my accident took place a little over 25 years ago in Spain. And uh, I was with two colleagues with OM. We'd gone to Portugal, appointed a OM representative there. We were traveling back to Spain, to Barcelona, where uh, actually my family was, because it was during the Easter vacation. And that's when we had the accident, and I suffered a broken neck, which has left me, of course, uh, quadriplegic. Um, what goes through your mind when the accident happened? I thought I need to finally drive. I had a license but I hardly drove. We were married, um, the accident was in 82, so we were married since 68, 14 years. And um, I thought we need to move house. We lived upstairs. And you just don't, hmm. you think, how will the children take it? So you just somehow know God allowed it. You think he wasn't taken by surprise. And so he will somehow see you through. But those practical things, I know they came right away. We need to move house. We were upstairs, had the bathroom outside on the, on the landing. And then um, I need to get driving. And that's how far I could sing. One of the things that first impressed me was just God's grace. And right at the beginning was just the sense of God's peace that he was in control. And there was a very dear Spanish brother, a leader, and he visited us and he asked Margit, my wife, uh, in the hospital while I was in intensive care, and his question was, do you have peace? And she was able to say yes. And I could say also, yes. God's peace. And that's a gift from God. You can't manufacture it. 
It comes from God. And besides God's grace, the other thing I really appreciated was how my family and my larger spiritual family in OM, my local church in Brussels, and even on a wider scale around Europe and around the world, people prayed, loved, encouraged. Uh, what a tremendous help. And uh, I think when you really go through a difficult time, the support of true friends, really true friends, uh, is one of God's greatest gifts and one of God's greatest means to help us through. Somehow, Jonathan's brother was in Spain, so he came to see us there in that hospital. Daniel Gonzalez, the leader of Spain, like Jonathan mentioned, who had lost his wife the year before to, to cancer, he came. Uh, Mike Evans from France, leader, he came. Steve Hart, a lawyer, came to see us. So you just sensed you were carried. And um, in those early weeks, you just knew God was there so obviously. I mean, we had there also so many visitors and read the letters. He was in, then put in that striker frame. And we would read and we would just cry and cry. So it was actually a time of, even of, of healing coming to terms even then. I did not have a period of really wondering and, and rebelling against God or blaming God or blaming the driver. I forgave him. I had nothing in my heart against him. Uh, for me, somehow God enabled me to accept it and to go on. For me, the much greater difficulty is, uh, I say, the smaller, which become very big frustrations of being paralyzed and the limitations, because someone like me with a heart that goes around the world and a mind that works fast, and then a body that goes a lot more slowly, that produced, of course, frustrations. And uh, I realized that often in those frustrations is when sometimes anger, not so much against God, sometimes, well, God, why can't you at least reduce the pain a little bit Make it a little easier, help. <laughs> and of course, frustration sometimes can really hurt, especially someone like my wife. And she's borne the burden of also my frustrations and difficulties. Uh, in public, it seems other people get blessed. In private, she sometimes bears the brunt of some of my feelings of limitation and frustration. But uh, how God has kept her and used her, I think is an enormous blessing and gift from God. So I do want to give a tribute to my wife, Margaret, who stuck with me now over 25 years since the accident. You understand a little bit better. And when you hear of others going through struggles, you understand a little bit. But it, there is light at the end of the tunnel again and again. I asked God, and I had people pray for me and lay hands on me, but I never had the conviction in my heart that in this life here on earth, God was going to heal me of my paralysis. He still might, but he certainly will on the day of transformation and resurrection. And that is the hope for every believer. And that brings encouragement. 